Hi, welcome to Midas Touch Network and AYA. We are Black and Brown Women Disruptors, and I'm Dr. Ida Brown, and this is Dr. Sonia Sloan. So, you know, let's dive in here. What is Donald Trump hiding regarding his health? Let's show the clip. Former President Donald Trump is responding to calls from the Harris campaign uh, to release his medical records. He responded in a very late night Truth Social post saying, quote, I put out more medical exams than any other president in history and aced two cognitive exams. The doctor stated that my cognitive exams were exceptional. So reading a quote here, I am far healthier than Clinton, Bush, Obama, Biden, but especially Kamala. Just fact checking here, he has not released more medical exams than any other president in history. He has released relatively little detailed information about his own medical history. <laughs> I mean, can he, aced it. he aced it. Yeah. And those aren't even terms that we use. Right. And we'll go into that in a little bit. But I, I guess we're not surprised that Donald Trump is continuing to lie and evade the fact that his mental health is declining. So we have facts. Fact. At age 78, he's the oldest presidential candidate ever. And this was an issue when Joe Biden was a nominee. Fact, in the last few months, we he's had increasingly more documented rambling and incoherent rhetoric. And fact, America deserves to know if he is even a competent candidate from a medical standpoint, and we should all be worried. <laughs> what do you think, Dr. Sloan? Those are all great facts. And the fact is, we're not the only ones thinking this. I mean, even Fox News, you guys, Fox News. Fox News has questioned like 230 medical professionals. That's doctors, nurses, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, whoever, that basically are all calling him on the carpet and they want to see these medical records. So, you know, if you're going to point fingers and call your opponent crazy, not mentally sound, unstable, uh, and a host of other things, maybe I think turnabout is fair play. Let's roll the clip. Now calling on Trump to release his medical records, this after receiving a clean bill of health and accusing the former president of, quote, hiding from another debate. Take a listen. It makes you wonder, why does his staff want him to hide away? One must question, one must question, are they afraid that people will see that he is too weak and unstable? You know, listen, let's be clear. As doctors, we're taught that a patient's physical and mental status is is crucial to their overall well-being. You know, even as a surgeon, right, there's a concern at a certain point in time that there's a cognitive decline. So how old is someone to be? How old is too old to be a surgeon? So this has been looked at, right? The American College of Surgery, they say some warning signs, forgetfulness, hmm, evidence of poor clinical judgment, behavioral changes changes in personality, disruptiveness, incoherent documentation or speaking. And you know, certain countries like Australia, British Columbia, even certain hospitals in the United States actually have a mandatory retirement age. So when we're thinking about someone who's going to run the country uh, and have their finger on the nuclear buttons, eh, we really need to look at their cognitive uh, status to see if there's a cognitive decline. And we do that in med school. There's a, an exam called the mental status exam. And broadly, we look at the appearance, behavior, yeah, your motor activity, your speech, your mood, kind of how you're processing thoughts, uh, the content of your thoughts and your judgment and insight. And, you know, those are all things that we as a country want our, you know, our president to have. And, you know, there's many, many, several short tests that can be performed. I won't get into that, but <clears throat> I don't think Donald Trump Refer, uh, referenced any of those tests, mental status exams, whether it's the many mental status or a cognitive assessment or a dementia assessment. And I don't know, uh, or I can't recall any specific assessments where exceptional and the <laughs> best ever is a term that we use. So I, I don't know. What do you think, Dr. Sloan? Exceptional. That is not a medical term that we use, um, not even on different scales. He uh, and his medical team has not disclosed. And so we just want you to hell just pick a test, stick with one that all of us in the medical profession know and can trust. And 
um, really declare the transparency of your mental and your physical competency. You know, are you fit to be able to carry out the presidential duties of the United States? No. Uh, and you were so quick to point out that with Joe Biden, and now you want to point fingers at Kamala Harris, vice president, and it's not um, going off without a hitch because so many people are saying, no, wait a minute. Uh, she's very competent. And, uh, you know, he and his staff has found ways to just evade this question over and over again. And once again, the tactics that we already know about distracting, diverting, and by saying that she is mentally unfit and she is, you know, crazy and all these other things is just another um, play from his playbook that we already know that he does over and over again. And here's just case in point. Um, something that he loves to do on X or Twitter or other social media platforms. Let's check this out. According to her doctor's report, she suffers from urticaria defined as a rash of round red welts on the skin that itch intensely, sometimes with dangerous swelling. She also has allergic rhinitis and allergic conjunctivitis, a very messy and dangerous situation. These are deeply serious conditions that clearly impact her functioning. <laughs> She has allergic rhinitis and conjunctivitis, the medical term for hay fever. One of the most notable and honestly strange stretches of the campaign we have seen, a Trump town hall that essentially just stopped in the middle with him playing music and dancing on stage. He had only taken about four questions in what was supposed to be a town hall, and instead it was just him on stage requesting various songs to be played and, and dancing for over half an hour. <laughs> So 30 minutes of the new motion that everyone is going to be doing now is going to be the Donald Trump. Um, you know, listen, the best song of the night after that uh, town hall was the YMCA song when he got everyone to sing this. And I think that someone forgot to tell him that that is like the national anthem for the LGBTQIA voters out there. So, hey, to each his own. But again, this goes to question his mental capacity. Um, not just uh, psychologically, emotionally, physically, but he's just not a sound man. And we've known that over and over again, but we want to see the records. Just as he's demanded records from other people, uh, especially even our own and loving person. Let me see. I think I have my cup. Wasn't it his, his birth certificate that he demanded? I mean, come on, people. We can't get this man's tax returns and we can't even get a medical statement saying that he really is sound and fit by people that are not of his team. I think the United States deserves better. So, Dr. Brown? I mean, he just does so much projection. It's we, we as a country deserve better to know the status of our leader for the next four years. So, you know, unfortunately, no candidate running for office has ever really been challenged or forced to disclose their physical or mental health status until this year. I mean, it's always been voluntary and uh, kind of a quote unquote gentleman's agreement, just like the taxes, right? You both candidates release it. Um, but truly there's no precedence for this. There is no procedure for assessing the president's physical or mental capabilities to carry out the duties um, required of the president until the adoption of the 25th Amendment in the U.S. Constitution in 1967. But even that amendment does not speak to a candidate running for office. And most would venture to even say that if you were to remark on someone's physical health or mental capacity, um, that that's really going against some of our HIPAA laws and, and the right to privacy. And even if you look at Kamala Harris, uh, Vice President Harris's uh, medical report, it says that she consents to have this record shared with the people of the United States. So I, I don't know. What do you what do you think about this all, Dr. Sloan? I mean, I understand the the HIPAA, you know, us trying to protect a patient's privacy. I understand the right for um, all of us to be able to have an understanding of who we're voting for or who we're voting not for. 
Um, but more than anything else, I think um, Donald Trump is going to keep us waiting. The American public will be kept waiting once again uh, because we know for a fact we haven't seen tax returns from Donald Trump for years. But if nothing else, let's let's leave our viewers with a very interesting research article, if you can put that article up, that um, will shape the future of candidates between about their health and their mental status and having this disclosure. And there was an interesting article in 2006 by uh, Streifer, Rubel, and Fagan, and it was entitled The Medical Privacy and the Public's Right to Vote, What Presidential Candidates Should Disclose. Uh, it was published in the Journal of Medicine and Philosophy, and basically they concluded in this research article years ago, presidential candidates should disclose their medical conditions that significantly affect their ability to carry out their duties of the presidency. It's uh, more important to be an informed voter, I think, who can make decisions about the candidate and the policies that are going to impact our country and our lives. I mean, this man is going to be calling, carrying the football, so to speak, the nuclear football. So we have to, in the future, explore ways to enforce this requirement of candidates disclosing their mental and physical um, status. And uh, currently, though, given our history of secrecy regarding health of uh, the presidents in the past and some of the candidates, I think it's going to become really crucial that we as the public push this issue. I completely agree. So we here at AIA will leave you, our viewers, with this thought. Please vote early. Thank you for watching the Midas Touch Network. Please like, share, and subscribe. See you later, guys. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.